We're going to go straight for the back line right here. We don't have any runes, so we can't really stun anyone. We're going to jump onto the outwash. Use our three. We're able to get the pick onto him. And now we're just going to keep running, trying to get behind this team. Going straight for the back line. Our team's able to catch up, clean up the Apollo. The Hercules goes down. Gonna get some damage onto this Jing. That's his jump, that's his dash. We're gonna jump, get basic, land our three, and we're able to get ourselves a double kill. What a do, skibbity boo, it's your boy Shiny V Gaming, and today we have a viewer request to play Fenrir in solo. If you are new to the channel, I upload every single day. I add some commentary to a game that I've already played with the intentions of seeing what went right, what went wrong, and hopefully there's something that we can learn together. If there is something that we learn together, make sure you check out the channel and subscribe for more content. As always, the full build is in the description down below. If you are a returning viewer, Fenrir works pretty well in jungle, solo, or support. He just has a really good kit. His ultimate allows him to displace people, and he can be very aggressive early on. So let's go ahead and jump into Fenrir's kit. Fenrir is one, unchained. Fenrir is going to leap forward, dealing damage to all enemies when he lands. At full runes, the leap is going to stun enemies hit. If the leap hits an enemy god, the cooldown is reduced by 30%. The stun is one second. Fenrir is two. Seething Howl. Fenrir is going to rear back and howl, inspiring himself with physical power and a lifesteal buff. While inspired, Fenrir is going to generate two runes. The physical power is going to be 20 at level 1, 80 at level 5, and the physical lifesteal is 35%. The buff is going to last for 6 seconds. Fenrir is 3. Brutalize. Fenrir is going to gain increased protections and pounce at a ground target location. If there is an enemy in the radius, he's going to strike them 4 times, dealing damage with each strike and hit enemies around the target for 60% of the damage. While casting this ability, Fenrir is immune to knockups. At full runes, each strike is going to gain 15% additional power scaling. The protections is going to be 5 plus 1 per level. Fenrir's ultimate, Ragnarok. Upon Ragnarok, Fenrir is going to grow massive in size, becoming immune to crowd control while moving faster. Fenrir bites an enemy god, dealing physical damage and carrying them away. Biting a crowd control immune target is going to deal the damage but in the ultimate. At full runes, his protections double. He's going to gain an increased 75% movement speed while he's in this ultimate, and the carry duration is 2 seconds. And finally, Fenrir is passive. Unbound runes. Fenrir is going to gain efficiency as he attacks. Every hit from a basic attack activates one rune up to a maximum of 5. Unchained, Brutalize, and Ragnarok gain additional benefits when used at maximum runes, and the runes are consumed. Enemy gods that Fenrir kills will fully activate all of his runes. Assisting with a kill will grant Fenrir 3 runes. In terms of the leveling order, at level 1, we want to put a point into a 3. Level 2, put a point into a 1. Level 3, put a point into a 2. We want to put another point into a 3 at level 4. We want to max out our ultimate whenever we can. Max out our 3, max out our 1, max out our 2. In terms of the start, we started with Leather Cow. Leather Cow is going to provide us with 15 physical power, 10% physical lifesteal, and 5% attack speed. It has a passive that while you are within 66 units of an allied god, you're going to gain 10% attack speed. If you are alone, you're going to instead gain 5% movement speed. The reason we are going into this item is because it's going to provide us that 10% lifesteal, which is going to be very helpful for sustaining early on in the lane. We went with Blink for our Relic, a Health Chalice, and 5 Multi Potions. We have this Hercules very weak, so there's a very good chance we're going to be able to get a pick on him pretty soon. He's leaving lane. We're just going to basic attack these minions, so if he does show back up in lane, we can use our abilities on him. One by one, they all Looks like he just did a circle around his blue buff, which is a little strange. We're going to go ahead and rotate to our blue buff. Our blue buff is going to provide us MP5, which is the rate at which we recover mana every 5 seconds. And this also going to provide us 10% cooldown reduction. We just hit level 5, and it looks like this Hercules picked up Teleporting Glyph instead of Beads. We're going to go ahead and use our ultimate. Fight him. Bring him back to the Hunt Bats. Use our 3, and we're able to get the pick onto the Hercules. So as a Fenrir solo, if your jungle is nearby, that is a great time to use your ultimate. 
bring the enemy back so that way you and the jungler can get damage off onto the enemy. Another great time to use your ultimate is whenever the enemy is close to your tower, you can use the ult, bring them under tower, and they're going to take some tower shots. Early on, this will usually open you up to a kill. Hercules is kind of chasing us. He backs off, so we're going to go ahead and back. We're going to go ahead and pick up the warrior tab eye for that 40 physical power. One thing I do think is weird is that on Fenrir's jump, whenever he leaves Fountain, he doesn't consume the mana until he lands. Doesn't make the biggest difference in the world, but I feel like most jumps use the mana at the start of the jump, not on the land. So whenever you leave Fountain, you have full mana. Very minor thing, but I do think it's a little weird. It's just not as consistent as almost every other jump in the game. Hercules is looking to get some damage on us. He misses. We're going to get to use our ultimate, grab him, pull him under tower. We're going to get some basics onto him. Activate our two, get another basic. Jump, get the stun, basic. We're waiting for his dash. We use our three, and he dashes right as we use our three. He's very weak. We get him with a basic, and we're able to clean him up. We need to avoid the minions. We are able to avoid the minions and get ourselves that pick. So we're going to activate our two, get some basics on the minions. The two is going to provide us that 35% additional lifesteal. The Wheelish is on us. We're going to jump. She uses her ultimate. We use our three, but she uses her two. She knocks us up and is able to clean us up with a basic attack. We were kind of hoping that the Wheelish ultimate was going to be down. Unfortunately, it was not. I think this is a very cheese item and a very cheese thing to do, but if you pick up the tier 1 of Breastplate of Valor, it's going to provide you 20 physical protections for 600 gold. No other item does this. I recently fell in love with this tier 1 version of the item. Almost every other physical item at tier 1 is going to provide you 15 or 10 physical protections. But gaining 20 for 600 is a pretty big deal. So the way that protections work in Smite is it is 100 divided by 100 plus X, where X is the amount of protections that you have. So we have 20, so it's going to be 100 divided by 120, so that equals 5 6. So we're taking 5 6 of the damage instead of the full six sixth of the damage so by picking up this item we're reducing all incoming physical damage by one sixth which is pretty nutty for 600 gold we're gonna jump try to get the proc onto the hercules so that way the minions group up on us that is also another little thing we can do in lane is if we jump on the enemy we're going to get the melee minions to target us, and we want to group them up with the back archers, and then use our three. That's probably the only way we're going to be able to hit all the minions with our three. You can cancel the three early if you feel like the enemy is pulling you into a bad position, or if you're getting very weak. We're going to jump, group up the minions, activate our three. That's going to be our fastest way to clear the minion wave. We're checking his blue, it is there. Retreat right lane. Enemy missing middle. Cancel that. Is ready. Sorry. I think one of the worst matchups that I had going against me when I was trying to record this video was going against a Gilgamesh. Gilgamesh has a jump and his drop kick, both of which cancel your three. The more ways the enemy can cancel your three, the rougher the matchup's going to be for you. It's getting some good damage off. We're going to keep popping those health chalices. Our blue's up, so we're going to rotate there. We're also going to let our jungler know that we have our ultimate. We're going to blink up. That's his dash. We're going to use our ultimate, bring him to the humbats. Use our three. And Humbats is able to clean up the Hercules. Stacks, 
So whenever we secure the Totem of Coup, that's going to provide everyone on our team with a little bit of MP5. So imagine it's like popping a mana potion for everyone on your team. And it's also going to provide everyone 25 gold. In some situations, being able to get that MP5 from Totem of Coup can make the difference in dual lane or can make or break dual lane sometimes. If you're constantly getting the MP5, you don't need to worry about your mana. However, if you're not, sometimes you're going to have to back a little earlier than you want to. We have about 2,000 gold in the pocket. We're going to jump, get the minions to group up, use our three. So we are definitely out clearing this Hercules when we have two levels on him. We're going to jump, get the stun, land the basic, activate our three. I think it is very important for us to be landing our basic attack in between abilities. One thing we did not do very well this game was activate our two before using our three. We just here, we're gonna use our three instead of our jump. That baits out her ultimate. We're gonna go ahead and use our ultimate. Oh no, we keep missing. We're gonna grab her, pull her under tower, basic. We're gonna go ahead and jump. We miss our jump. We're gonna use our three. We tried to, but Hercules dashes, and now it's on cooldown. Super unlucky. We had that Awelish dead to right. We had that Awelish dead to right. I'm going to go ahead and just clear the minion wave. Use our three onto Hercules. We're completely out of mana, so we're going to rotate back, pick up our blue buff with the Hun Bats. We don't really have the mana. We also have a fat penny in the pocket, so we're probably going to back right here. Next, we're going to be picking up Shifter Shield. Shifter Shield is going to provide us 35 physical power, 25 physical protections. It has a passive that while over 75 health, you're going to gain 35 physical power. While under 75 health, you're going to gain 40 protections. This is magical and physical protections. So we're going to be going into a lot of hybrid items with Fenrir Solo. Definitely want to become tankier, but we also want to increase our damage output. Hercules is in mid. We're going to go ahead and rotate over. We do have our ultimate, so it's a good rotation. We're going to blink up, use our ultimate, grab the Jing Chan, pull him under tower, clean him up. Maybe not the best target selection, but we did want to get the pick onto that weak target. Take a decent amount of damage, we're going to kind of loop back, use our 3 onto the Hercules, avoid any outwash damage. Apollo's on us, we're in a little bit of trouble, we're going to jump away. A really good target for us would be this Wheelish. She's less than half health, and I feel like if we got on her, we'd be able to get the pick onto her. One by one, they all Hercules goes down. We're going to avoid the Apollo. We're going for the South Wash now. We use our three, get some good damage onto him. Apollo messes us. We're going to jump over the wall. Sounds like a wheel is chasing us. We do have a health chalice going. We're going to activate our 2, activate our 3. She uses her flip, cancels us. It's going to be a basic attack trade. And we're able to get the pick onto the Awelish. Nice job. Thank you. We're going to go ahead and rotate back to our lane. Clean up this fat minion wave. My way. Attack middle lane. The fight in mid is still happening, but we rotated it over. We did our damage. We got our ult off. We do have our ult again. We're going to clean up this minion wave. So if we were to have stayed in mid, we probably would have lost a little bit of level or opportunity to get level right there. But by rotating over, we're able to kind of keep our lead. 
I'm gonna go ahead and pick up her blue buff. Looks like Herc's going for his blue. On my way. An enemy has been slain. Thanks. You're great. A wheelish is here. There's the flip. We're gonna go ahead and just jump away. She uses her ultimate. We're gonna use our three to get a little bit of movement speed. Athena's coming in. We're gonna go ahead and use our ultimate. We're gonna grab the wheelish. Just hold her into this Athena ability. We jump, we're able to get the pig onto the wheelish. Now we're gonna go ahead and fall back. I think if we got hit by one more basic and that ultimate, we would have gone down. So it's a good thing we started backing right there. We're gonna go ahead back and start working on the sledge. The sledge was probably one of the best items in season seven. However, it got nerfed. It's still a solid item. But ever since it got nerfed, I feel like people haven't really been picking it up. But it's going to do exactly what we need it to this game. Your right tower is under attack. Ultimate is Retreat. Attack on my way. Two people in our lane. Trying to let our teammates know, like, hey, we're about to be here. Feel free to attack. Keep up the high pressure. Some good damage by Athena. We're waiting for that second jump. We're gonna use our three. Use a basic, and we're able to clean up the Jing Chen. Our blue is almost up, so we're gonna go ahead and rotate to that. We're gonna go ahead and hit the Greater Scorpion. We can solo this by ourselves. I believe in the 8.4 patch, they changed the health and protections of the Greater Scorpion. So they're much easier to kill now than they were at the beginning of the season. We do have enough money for the sledge, so on the next back, that's what we're going to be picking up. Jump, get a little bit of damage onto this Herc. Use their three, get some damage onto the minions as well. Yep, we actually back there. So we are going to be missing a little bit of golden XP because we backed right there instead of going the next minion wave. But we're going to go ahead and pick up the sledge. The sledge is going to provide us 40 physical power, 250 health, 150 mana, and 20% crowd control reduction. It has a passive that for each enemy god within 55 units of you, you're going to gain a stacking buff that provides 8 protections. This can stack up to 3 times. You used to stack up to 10 times, well no, you used to provide 10 protections per stack, so it got a nerf of 6 protections whenever you're near 3 enemies. Used to be 30, now it's 24. So now our blue buff is enhanced. The MP5 does not change at all, but instead of getting 10% cooldown reduction, we're going to be getting 20% cooldown reduction. Which is always super helpful on Fenrir, because we're just going to be able to ult more often. This man's pretty close to our tower, we're going to jump, get the stun. Oh, we missed our stun, we're going to grab him, he uses his beads, takes the tower shot for us anyway, and we're able to get the pick onto the Hercules. After going into the sledge, we're going to start working on Ansile. 
on style. Pronounce one of those two ways. Oh, hello, Zhing. One by one, they all will fall. Attack middle lane. I'm gonna go ahead and get this next wave before hitting the enemy blue. Kind of annoying that those two archers just walked up. So we proxied that wave. There is another wave coming. Is ready. It looks like we're going to try to help out those Humbats with the Wheelish. We jump, miss the stun, get a basic, land our three, but she jumps as soon as we hit it. We're going to go ahead and use our ultimate. We can take a few tower shots. We assume that the Humbats is going to get the pick. He does not. This Wheelish is very weak. She blinks away. The Uller just gets melted. We're gonna use our beads right here and just fall back. We're diving too hard for that Wheelish and the enemy team is crashing in on us. Retreat. Be right back. Retreat. We're gonna go ahead and just settle for farm. Your right tower has been destroyed. Our enhanced blue buff is up, so we're gonna go ahead and rotate to this before backing. If we're hitting this, we should also hit another wave before backing. Oh, there's a wheel. She's still hanging about. She uses her ultimate, basic. There's a flip. Now we can use our three. But we're able to clean her up with our basic attack. We're going to three over the Hercules. We are very weak, but we should be able to get out right here. Apollo's on our right Phoenix, which is never good. We're going to go ahead and back and pick up Onsile. Onsile is going to provide us 60 physical power, 30 magical protections, and 10% cooldown reduction. It has a passive that when you take magical damage from an enemy ability, you're going to unleash a shockwave that silences all enemies within a range of 30 units for one second. This effect can only trigger once every 30 seconds. So luckily, Apollo was not able to get that right Phoenix. We're going to use our ultimate. Pull this outwash back. Use our three. And we're able to clean him up. Hercules is very weak. We're going to jump on him. Team Matt's able to clean him up. So we make the call to go for gold. But it is not here. So we're just going to go ahead back. We really need to hold down right. Apollo is going to be up in three seconds, and if I was him, I would just use my ultimate and go solo the right Phoenix, even if it killed me. We upgraded our starter item from Leader's Cow to Hunter's Cow. Hunter's Cow is going to provide us 60 physical power, 15% physical lifesteal, and 20% attack speed. It has a passive that while you're within 55 units of an allied god, you're going to gain 25% attack speed aura. If you are alone, you're going to instead gain 10% movement speed. So right now we're really just trying to hold down the fort on this right Phoenix. Make sure that if Apollo does ult, we're going to be able to stop him from getting a free Phoenix. We saw him in lane, so he wasn't ulting right off of spawn. It's still a possibility that he could ult in, however, less likely. If nobody can test this, we definitely have the damage and protections to take this Pyromancer. The Relish does show up. We are able to secure the Pyromancer. We're going to chase her down. We do have her ultimate. We get her beads. We're going to use our 3 onto her. She uses her 2. We unleash our Shockwave from Onsile. That's a, a Wheelix that has gone down. We're going to land some basics. We're going to use our 3. Team Matt's able to get a double. 
We're gonna get the stun. And Team Matsuba will get herself a triple kill. So our team is pushing this tower, but there's still the tier one over in solo. We lose our tower, but that's not that big of a deal this late into the game. We, will succeed. we do not want to take tower shots, so we're going to go ahead and secure this tower. The enemy team is able to get the Oni Fury. We're gonna go ahead and get some damage on this tier two in solo. We see a wheelish, so we are gonna start backing it up. That's her dash. She's her ultimate. We're gonna use our beads. We're gonna use our three to get away. We know she has blink, so we have our blink covered. She blinks, we blink. And it looks like she gave up pursuit. We're gonna go ahead back, sell our tier one of Breastplate, and we're gonna start working on Hide of the Urchin. A little late in the game to be going into the Hide, however, I feel like it's gonna be very, very helpful once we get it fully online. Two people in our lane. We're gonna use our three, and we're gonna fall back to tower. We do have our ultimate. Our jump is not gonna stun. So this is an Oni wave. We're gonna go ahead and clean this wave up. That's two ultimates from the enemy on this Athena. Get some free damage onto the Jing, but our real target is this Wheelish. We got to use our ultimate. Oh, uh, we keep missing her, but we are able to get the pick onto her, even though she used your beads. Just because our bite does damage. We're very weak. We're kind of looking for an opportunity, but Jing Chen is chasing us down, so we aren't going to have that opportunity. We're gonna go ahead back and pick up Hide of the Urchin. Hide of the Urchin is going to provide us with 30 physical protections, 30 magical protections, 250 health, and 250 mana. That's a passive that you gain 3 magical and 3 physical protections for each god kill or an assist. At 7 stacks, this item evolves, providing a health shield that gains stacks every 2 seconds. The shield will only stack if you have not taken or dealt damage in the last 5 seconds. Each stack provides 10% of 100 health, plus 5 per level. Our team is able to secure the fire giant. The fire giant is going to provide everyone on our team who is alive with a buff that gives us MP5, HP5, and allows us to deal more damage to structures. Be right back. Retreat, robot. I'm going to go ahead and start working on the greater scorpion. Just make sure that our blue is always enhanced. So we went mostly hybrid items, then we went one tank item. We can end this build with a full power item. Ultimate is ready. I would lean towards Heartseeker just to make sure that we're dealing good damage to the tanks. And with this build, we can most likely just solo a squishy character on the enemy team. Be careful. Group up. Attack right lane. Run my way. Attack right lane. 
We might be able to pinch this Apollo. Nope, looks like the Apollo is able to ult away. We're gonna go ahead and work on this tower. I'll wash in Jing Chen here. We're gonna jump, avoid the Jing Chen ultimate. Get some good damage onto this outwash. We're gonna use our ultimate. That's his Aegis. That's his beads. We're gonna bite him and get the pick onto the outwash. We're probably not gonna be able to take that at Jing Chen by ourselves. We're gonna use our three. Athena ult hits the Jing Chen. Somebody else is rotating in, so we're gonna start backing up. For our second relic, we went with beads. They just have some things that we need to beads on our team. Our enhanced blue is up, so we're gonna start rotating towards that, trying to make a play for it. However, Wheelish is also over here, and she might have dropped it. She dropped it just now. If we can catch up to her, we're going to try something. While she is on her little panther, there's not too much we're going to be able to do. We blink up. She jumps. Waiting for her flip. There it is. We're going to use our three. We're going to use our ultimate. Bite her. That's her beads. Activate her two. She uses her dash again. We're going to jump away. We did have our beads, so if she did ult us, we would have been safe. Humbass is able to clean her up as she's chasing me down. So that was a nice little bait and switch. The Jing Chen ultimate. We're gonna use our beads. We're gonna go ahead and clean up this menu wave. There is a bit of a fight going on in mid. We're gonna start rotating mid. We're gonna go straight for the back line right here. We don't have any runes, so we can't really stun anyone. We're gonna jump onto the outwash. Use our three, we're able to get the pick onto him. And now we're just gonna keep running, trying to get behind this team, going straight for the back line. Our team's able to catch up, clean up the Apollo. The Hercules goes down. Gonna get some damage onto this Jing. That's his jump, that's his dash. We're gonna jump. Get basic, land our three, and we're able to get ourselves a double kill. We're gonna go ahead and tank the tower for our team, do a little bit of zoning, make sure that this wheelish can't push up. We're gonna jump on her, get the ultimate used on us. We're gonna use our ultimate, pull her back towards our team, and we trade our life. It's a full D side on the enemy team. I think that was an absolute worth trade. Make sure that a wheelish goes down for our life. And then our team is able to push the middle phoenix and then push the titan. We are going to be able to secure the W off of that. If you enjoyed this video, make sure you give it a thumbs up. It really helps these videos out. If you feel like you learned anything at all, check out the channel and subscribe for more content. These stats for this game will be posted in just a moment. Thank you for stopping by. I hope you have a great day. I'll catch you next time. Bye-bye.